I grew up in a small town with a population of about 9,000 people. It was a nice sleepy place with nothing really remarkable about it. Well, some people would point to the local gourd growing contest and disagree with me, but I never thought there was anything special about where I lived. That was until I turned 13, but I think I had my suspicions far before then. It was when I was seven and watching something on television. I must have seen this show a million times before, but it was only then that it hit me that there was something off about every house I had ever seen on television. Namely, there was a door in the front. Of course, now I realize that such a thing is perfectly normal, but not then. None of the residential houses in my town had a front door or a back door or any other kind of door leading outside for that matter. You're probably wondering how it was that we got in and out then. The answer was varied. Some people would just climb in through a window built for that purpose. A lot of houses had a fire escape, the kind you might find in a place like New York City, which could be lowered down so people could climb up. The inside of our houses were normal though, with doorways and doors inside, no problem. Just no doors were leading right outside the house. If anyone came to visit, they'd knock on a window or ring a bell outside one. Usually, we would leave a sign outside leading up to the front of the house telling people how they should announce themselves. Packages would usually be left below the windows in case no one was home. The pizza delivery guy would tap on our window, and we'd open it to take the pizza and hand over the cash. This all must seem really silly to you, but I had grown up like this and had never questioned it. Not to say that this was true for all buildings in town. Public buildings like the school and such did have doors, but not the houses where people lived. In addition, there was a rather strict curfew where everyone would have to go home by sunset. Again, I never really questioned the curfew, given that was how I was raised. That was until I turned 13. Just like many teenagers, I began questioning many of the rules imposed upon me. However, I still stuck to the curfew given how strict our town was about it. That was except for one night, a night I won't forget as long as I lived. It all started with my friend Dan. While I remember the events of that night vividly, what led up to that night is kind of hazy. I think that Dan lost a bet, and as part of that, he had to stay in the school on Halloween night past curfew. Either that or it was a dare. Regardless of how it started, Dan and I had been as thick as thieves, so I know I couldn't let him go do this alone. Now, while curfew was enforced in my town rather strictly, it was generally okay if you were an hour or so late. Not so for Halloween. On that night, everyone, even the adults went back home, far before it became dark. As a matter of fact, we even did our trick-or-treating one day before, on October 30th, and that too while the sun was up. My house didn't have a fire escape, so my choice of an exit was a window on the ground floor. When my parents were busy with something in the kitchen, I gently slid it open and hopped out. It honestly surprised me how easy it was to sneak out. Then again, now that I think about it, I feel guilty because it probably meant my parents just implicitly trusted me that much. I landed on the ground lightly and slid the window so it was open just a crack for my return. I should have realized as I wandered around the street and saw no one that this was a bad idea, but when I saw Dan, my resolve strengthened 
and we made our way to our school. You have the camera? I asked him. Yeah, he said with a grin. I had always thought there would be police cars patrolling the streets during the curfew to enforce it, but no, the streets were totally empty. This should have been a clear message to us that we should have turned around, but we were two boneheaded teenagers and thought nothing of it. The school itself had a strange haunting feel to it. It was not helped by the fact it was Halloween night and the decorations everywhere leered at us. I knew there was no way that I'd have the courage to come here by myself if ever asked to. Man, who would have thought the day'd come when you'd sneak out of your house to go to school? I asked. Dan chuckled. He was rather famous for ditching school, but I was usually too chicken to join him. I was also kind of a bookworm and teacher's pet and didn't want to miss out on school. Dan could usually drag me into almost anything, but that was one of the exceptions. That was part of why I wanted to be with Dan this night. I wanted to do something really crazy during my adolescent years. Come here, Dan said. The front door is locked, but I left a window open. The two of us were used to jumping into buildings through windows and we found ourselves inside of an old classroom we had been in two grades prior. I was about to ask why he chose this one in particular, but then remembered that our new one was on the second floor. So what now? I asked as the two of us were inside. Dan turned on the camera and introduced himself. Yo guys, it's me, your boy Dan. And here we are at school on Halloween night, he said. His style was rather similar to old school YouTubers. You could maybe even imagine him adding in that you should like and subscribe at the end. So yeah, we're here. And just to prove that this was on Halloween, I'm leaving this here. He pulled out a pine cone, which he had painted blue. I'm going to put this on our desk to prove we were here. If anyone in the morning saw that, they would just think it was some sort of weird art project someone left. But anyone who saw that tape would know otherwise. Come on, Dan said, motioning for me to follow him upstairs. Now that I look back on the whole thing, it was odd that the door of the classroom wasn't locked and that we could go wander around the place so easily. But thinking about it some more, it was obvious why they wouldn't bother locking it up. Because no one was stupid enough to break in. We went up the stairs, and every single squeak and creak sent me nearly jumping out of my shoes. Dan shook his head as he saw me. He had nerves of steel, at least, he did for now. The two of us walked into our classroom and set the pine cone on the table. Dan took out the camera to start talking to it again when I heard something very loud. Dan stopped talking as I peeked out a window. I saw some shadowy figures nearing the school. Dan, we're being found out. Dan took a quick look as well and motioned for us to hide. I didn't notice it because I only got a quick glance outside, but the figures had very odd proportions. In other words, they were not human at all. But at the time, I had just assumed that our parents had come for us. Dan turned off his flashlight and also his camera. I turned off mine as well. After some whispering, we both decided to try to use the other set of stairs to get to a room at the back of the school. If push came to shove, we could get outside through a window and sneak out behind the school. It was a bit harder maneuvering, given we weren't using flashlights, but as we heard the sound of footsteps, we quickened our pace. Here, Dan said while opening the door. Both of us ducked into a classroom and I began wiggling a window free so we could get out. 
Come on, Dan, let's go, I told him. We had pretty much done enough risky things that night to become living legends among the class, as far as I knew. So even if we hadn't technically spent the whole night at the school, it was still cool. No one would look down on us. However, Dan seemed to be frozen in place for some reason. I tried shaking him, and he just pointed out the other window into the hallway. I couldn't see his expression in the darkness, and all he did to acknowledge my prodding was to raise his flashlight and turn it on. One of those things was standing right outside the window. There is no other way for me to describe it other than a thing. It had to be about 7 feet tall. It had a lower body which was mechanical. Its upper portion was wearing some sort of military coat and its head was smashed in and deformed. It only had one discernible eye, which was focused on us. Dan screamed, his nerves of steel broken, and I grabbed his hand and had to almost practically drag him out the window. The two of us didn't look back as we raced back to our houses and half the time it had taken for us to get there. Needless to say, my parents were both very worried and very pissed. Oh, I was punished severely for what I had done, but when I told them the story about what I had saw, both of them had a horrified look on their faces. The two of them whispered to each other, and my dad told me a story. Normally I'd tell you this when you turned 18, but now that you've seen one of them, what are they? I bursted out. Calm down, we don't know, my dad explained. At some point during the Cold War, our town was a testing ground for the military. They were trying to make a new kind of soldier, and it went wrong somehow, and they just left. But then, those things began to wander the streets at night, and would burst into people's houses, knocking down the door, no matter what it was made of, or how many locks you put on it. They could sense life, and we couldn't hide from them in any reliable way. One or two people were injured, and many just disappeared after encountering them. We thought about abandoning the town, but, well, we found a way to deal with them. Whatever programming they had had a severe flaw. They couldn't find their way into places that didn't have a door. Seems like they wouldn't even identify it as a house. And so, that's why we make houses like this. Why on Halloween though? My dad shrugged. Some people say they were made using malevolent spirits and fusing them with technology at the time somehow, which is why they became more active on Halloween. But no one knows for sure. Maybe that's the reason they can't get in if there's no door. Perhaps the spirits or entity they are based on can only get in through a doorway. Anyway, they may or not turn up on any given night, but they're always active on Halloween. You two are lucky to have escaped. After the explanation, there was a lot of yelling, and a long story short, I was grounded for most of my teenage years. With all that said, our town isn't a big place. It's really nice. Just in case you happen to visit, make sure not to stay around past night, especially if it's Halloween.